Hi, this is Melissa Bob and Boy, and I'm going to do a basic introduction to the parts and the setup and beginning to spin on a double drive Saxony style wheel. So, um, this is the Saxony style. It, it was a flax wheel originally, even though you can spin wool on it. It has a flax disc assembly. The, the wheel and flyer assembly, assembly are oriented in this horizontal direction. Okay, um, Uprights have the wheel usually at the bottom with the Irish. They have them on the top. And there are other wheel configurations, Tyrolean and that sort of thing. Um, parts of the wheel. The wheel. This is the drive wheel. It drives everything. It sits in uprights. It hangs in those up uprights with an axle. Often there are pegs here. Sometimes you have to put um, some padding and stuff in there because it's gotten worn out and it needs to be lifted. These um, uprights need to be in the right order. If you have a new one to you and you put it together and, and the wheel is hanging all wonky, try s switching the uprights and see if that works. You may have them in the wrong holes. Anyway, here's the axle. Back here is the crank. It's the curved part. And the crank is how the footman attaches and the footman attaches then to the treadle. The treadle is what your foot drives the wheel with and I'll show that in a minute. This is a leg. That sounds deadly obvious. I'm not afraid to be obvious. This is the leg where you will often find a nail in the bottom of it at the end. It sticks out. It was designed to keep the wheel from scooting across the floor. It will gouge your floor, so if, if you're not on the carpet and don't want gouges in your floor, you might want to think about that nail. Put a little cup or something under it. Um, I guess you could pull it out, but it is an antique. These are the other legs. This is the treadle assembly, and with the treadle, one runs the wheel. If you are not familiar with doing this, you need to get treadling to where you're not thinking about treadling. What I would recommend is that you get some um, commercial yarn and just spin it on for a while and get your treadling down to where you don't remember it. So, wheel, uprights, crank, footman, treadle, legs. Now, here, this is the table of the wheel. And in the table I've already shown you is the flax distaff assembly. Or, if this has gotten stored, at some point time in the past, then there is at least one hole there, and you don't know what goes there. The flax just if assembly went there. There also might be a little peg somewhere right around here, and that will be holding in this screw tension thread. If you need to take out this screw tension thread, you need to look to see if there's a peg there. It's not going to work otherwise. This one is a vintage wheel by um, Fransec. It's a country craftsman, and it doesn't have a peg. This is the screw tension assembly. If yours does not have one of these, it is um, not a Saxony style wheel. It might be uh, an ornamental or decorative wheel, what some people will call SWSOs or spinning wheel shaped objects. Um, I don't use that terminology because I think it implies that people are being deceptive when they weren't when they made them. Or it might be a Canadian production wheel which looks much like this but the, the knob just sticks out the front and doesn't adjust tension. The tension on the CPW or Canadian production wheel is done with tilt. Anyway, that's the screw. It screws into this. I don't know what that is called but it is threaded on the inside and that's how you go back and forth to tighten and loosen the string. This is the boss. We call it the boss. It also somebody just said today that they call it a mother of all collar. That's fine. I'm going to put this back in and then we'll do the flyer part. Again, if you have a peg, you need to put it back in. That peg would have gotten right down here into a collar on the screw tension. It's actually really nice because it keeps it from backing out, but you need to know it's there. Oh, some antique wheels, and I always forget this, some antique wheels have got a nut on the bottom here. Remember that part that I didn't know the name of that's got the threading on the inside? It's threaded all the way down and there's a nut at the bottom and you can tighten it and it keeps this guy from being loosey-goosey up here, but you need to remember that it's there when you're adjusting tension. You adjust tension with the screw. You move towards the wheel to loosen, away from the wheel to tighten. This is the drive band. I um, use anything that works. Uh, red Heart yarn, crochet yarn, old warp yarn, thread, what, whatever. I think this is a fairly nice old rug warp. 8-2 um, linen is nice. 10-2 cotton is nice. Um, there, it's just whatever drives your band, I mean drives your wheel, quite honestly. It, it's it's not magic, okay? 
um, as much as I would like to say that there's some special insider trick there's not. So, we did the boss or the mother of all color, then this is the mother of all. These are the maidens or the sisters. Um, if I can teach myself to, I'm going to start calling them the sisters rather than the maidens, which I find a little distasteful. And this is the flyer assembly. The flyer assembly consists of the flyer, which goes around and around on the outside of the bobbin, its axle, which has an orifice and also has um, threading. With the thread, onto the threading goes the whorl, W H O R L, in case I'm pronouncing it oddly for you with my southern accent, and then the bobbin. The bobbin spins inside the flyer at a different speed than the flyer is spinning. That allows, when you relax, that allows the thread to be pulled onto the bobbin. It is the, the difference in speed. This is a vintage wheel. Antique wheels, okay, vintage wheel, righty-tighty, like we're used to lefty-loosey, okay, Vin antique wheels may very well be lefty-tighty, righty-loosey, so if you can't get the whorl off, put a little bit of WD-40 in there, it never hurt, all right, let's sit for a second, that never hurt, and then try doing righty-loosey rather than lefty-loosey and see if, if it will um, be gently budged off. These are leathers, they are um, bearings that through which something runs. Some bobbins need washers in order to get the different, you know, to get this up here close and so that the bobbin's not wandering around through the whole neighborhood on the axle. Um, washers are optional if you have one, but the, it's making it tight and so the bobbin's not spinning very freely inside. It has to be absolutely free. If it's not absolutely free, then take the washer out. If it's spinning freely, but it's really, it's so short, Okay, you can cut yourself some washers out of cardboard and grease them a little bit with Vaseline or beeswax and they will serve perfectly well and you can figure out what you need. On my great wheel, for example, I've got five washers. Once I find where something needs to be, I like it to stay there. Um, if there's a lot of rattling for reasons that I still have not worked out in my head aside from getting bushings like this, okay, to get it closer to the to the axle so it doesn't rattle on the axle, you can also oddly put Vaseline down the entire length of the shaft and it will quieten quieten and smooth the operation of the wheel. Despite classes in physics I still can't explain that. When you tie your drive cordon, I have a video about tying your drive cordon so I'm not going to do the whole schmeal right now, but do be at the middle do be at the middle. I have seen people have it recommended to them that they be all the way down the side and then tie it as tight as you can. Well, then you can't ever loosen it. Okay, and if you were at the other end and you went all the way away from the wheel and then you tied it as tight as you can, then you can't ever tighten anymore. You need latitude. And so be at the middle and tie your drive cord on. Get this guy ready to roll. So let's look at it. It's spinning. The footman is not hitting the floor. I'm not thinking very much about spinning. And the drive band is coming off. What does that? Probably a little bit of rattling up here. I'm probably going to ignore it for the purposes of this video, but you might as well see that it happens to everyone. And what do you do? You find where it's not a snarl, and it doesn't look like it was a miracle that it was ever a drive band. You get it back up out of your way, and you begin to reassert yourself in a chaotic universe. Okay? And then tighten a little bit. That's probably what drove it to coming off, as I hadn't tightened my tension. And I'm going to go up on the larger of the whorl drives, because I want to slow this down for the purposes of the video. I'm going to also get into the grooves. Okay, now I'm ready to spin because I've got some specific things I want to cover that I've never covered in a video before. I'm going to tie on a leader, half hitch through, pull it through the loop, go the other way, and half hitch through again and pull it through the loop. The loop has to be on opposite sides, okay? That way it'll tighten either way you go. All right? I stapled, nailed, 
and taped leaders for 25 years before I learned from a video somewhere. May that person be blessed forever. How to tie one on. I then use an orifice hook, bring the yarn through, and I am now ready to spin. I think. No, I'm not. I want to check my tension first. I just, just hold on this. And I want to make sure that when I let go, it goes smoothly onto the bobbin. It did. And I'm ready. It wasn't flopping around out here, just gathering up that extra twist. And it didn't yank on there like a runaway horse, because you can't spin. You can't draft properly if it's doing that. Now, I'm going to go on and start on this hook, because there is a specific question that I'm going to answer here. And I'm going to join in. This is not a, I think this is a little, a little loose for my, there we go. I'm going to join in. This is not a basics of spinning video, so I'm not going to um, talk to you about how to spin. I am going to do something, though, that I prefer to do. I'm going to put a little knot there, because I don't like to fight a join. If, it's, if your bobbin does not draw on, I have a video called Help My Bobbin Won't Draw On because that's common. There are a few reasons, uh, and I go through it in that video. Now, mine's drawing on fine. I'm doing a short forward draw, like feeding a little baby bird, and it's great. And let's pretend that I've spun enough, and, and it's getting kind of big here. It's starting to fill. You then move to the next hook. And you spin some more. And let's pretend that that's gotten fuller than it is, okay? You then move to the next hook. And you spin some more. And you would continue to do that up and down the bobbin. Hook, 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 and then back. Hook, hook hook, 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 and then back up, okay, so that you evenly filled the bobbin. Um, I think that someone asked me a question, and I think that underlying that question was that they were spinning from just one hook. Maybe this one, or maybe this one, and they hadn't realized that they needed to move back and forth, and that's what that's for, and so that's that's why I'm, I'm kind of... Um, maybe beating a dead horse for some people. You know, that's what the off button is for. So I would continue to spin and then change. And hopefully it would be a peaceful and soothing occupation. Thank you.